Hi there. I'm so excited that you are checking out our Math Instructional Strategy CRA or Concrete Representational Abstract. And I'm going to be showing you an example with algebraic expressions. So first, if you're wondering what is CRA, it stands for Concrete Representational Abstract. It's also called Concrete Pictorial Abstract a lot. So you might hear those two words interchangeably. Concrete stands for a physical manipulation. There is something that we are going to manipulate physically. <clears throat> representational is a visual or pictorial representation of whatever we just did physically. And then abstract is a symbolic representation of what we just did physically and pictorially. Now it's just symbolic or, you know, the math language. We're using symbols, we're using um, variables and all of that. And that is, you know, where we want to get our students because that's what they're going to see on tests and in their books. So to kind of go a little bit more into depth with these, the concrete is the doing stage and involves physically manipulating objects to solve a math problem. It's physical, it's kinesthetic. Representational is the seeing stage and involves using images to represent objects to solve a math problem. So they're maybe drawing different shapes on their paper and that sort of thing. It's very visual still. And then abstract is the symbolic stage and it involves using only numbers and symbols to solve a math problem. So that's the symbolic stage with our equations and our expressions and all of that. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So here is our student activity example. So this is concrete representational abstract, a lesson you could do with students with algebraic expressions. And I really encourage you to check out the handout. It has the notes paper that I'm going to show you, as well as the slides that you can access to explain this to your students. So feel free to download that by putting your information down below. Um, so this is what I would explain to the students. So in our concrete stage, we're going to work in partners. Use the using the manipulatives, one person creates an expression by mixing two or three types of manipulatives on your plate. Ask your partner to physically regroup the types of manipulatives together and tell you how many of each you have, and then switch roles. So the other person will create the expression and then ask their partner to physically regroup and verbally say what we have. Continue switching roles until time is called. So um, maybe our manipulatives for this are Starburst, M&Ms, and Hershey Kisses. And so one student would take a bunch of these things and put it on a plate just in a random order. And then the next student's job would be to take them and regroup them. So to put all the Starburst together, all the like things together, all the Starburst together, all the M&Ms together, <clears throat> all the Hershey Kisses together and then to tell their partner what they have. I have seven Starbursts, I have five M&Ms, I have six kisses. And so they would just do that for a couple of minutes back and forth. Then we move on to the representational stage. So with this, we're gonna use um, different shapes and colors. In each first box of each row, draw a mix of shapes and colors in the box. Again, you can download the handout and use this exact handout. So in the first box of each row, so that first column, draw a mix of shapes and colors in the box and only write in the first box of each row. So that's what partner one is going to do. Um, the rules are that you must use two to three shapes. Each shape must be only one color. So for example, all the triangles are orange, all the squares are blue, um, and you can have two to three shapes and you can draw as many as you want in there and you can get as creative with your shapes. They can be smiley faces, they can be lightning bolts, they can be whatever you want, but <clears throat> the student partner A has to draw in that first column, just a hodgepodge of shapes. So it'd be something like this, right? We've got some purple squares, some yellow circles, and a blue triangle, right? So that's our first column. We're going to fill out just the first column. So then after they have that first column filled out, they're going to switch papers with a partner. So in the second box of each row, partner B is going to group the like shapes together. So you're going to group all the circles together, group all the triangles together, group all the squares together. And then in the third box of each row, you're going to explain in words how many of each shape you have. So it'll look like this. Here was our random grouping. Now I'm going to put all the circles together, all the squares together, and the triangle together. And then I'm going to explain it. I have four circles, three squares, and one triangle. And then you do that for the whole row on the first page of our note sheet that you can grab when you put in your information down below. Now we're ready for the abstract phase. So that's going to take a couple of minutes, probably five or so, maybe more minutes for them to complete the representational stage. Um, and then we move into the abstract stage. So we're going to connect the ideas of shapes that we've done physically and representationally to the idea of like terms. We didn't combine the Starburst and the M&Ms together. We kept them separate, right? We didn't combine the yellow triangles with the 
um, the yellow circles with the blue triangle, right? We kept them separate. It's the same thing when we have like terms. So we would explain that like terms are the same variable letter <clears throat> raised to the same power exponent. Step one is to copy the expression that we'll put on the board and identify like terms with shapes and colors. So it looks very similar to a representational um, idea. And then step two is to combine like terms by adding or subtracting the values of the like terms. So then we'll do an example together. I like to label this the I do. I'm gonna model this for my kids. So here's my expression and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put my shapes up around my like terms. So I have six X. And as I look at that expression, the other thing that needs to be in a blue circle is the positive 8x and I want to include the symbol either positive or negative in front of it. There's nothing else that has the x so I'm done identifying that like term. The next term I see is a positive 3. I'll put that in a red square and the positive 1 should go in a red square and the positive 2 should go in a red square. And now I'm going to combine just like I regrouped and combined my starburst together and I kept my m and separate. I'm going to do the same thing here. When I combine 6x and 8x, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14x. And when I combine 3 plus 1 plus 2, 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 2, 4, 5, 6. That gives me 6. And the this is a blue circle and a red square. This is just like having blue M&Ms and red Starbursts. They stay separate. I do not combine this. So my final answer is 14X plus six. Then maybe we do a we do. Maybe I want to use some cold call cards like I have here. And I want to call on students for each part of the problem and ask them, okay, what do I do first? And maybe I call on Liam and he says, identify my like terms. Great. So I'm going to put 6x in a circle. What else do I put in a circle, Sonia? Negative 8x. Great. Any, does anything else go in a circle, Valerie? No. So I, next I have positive three. That's going to go in a red square. Jalene, what else would go in a red square? The negative one. Great. Soraya, anything else go in a red square? The negative two. Great. Right. So you get the idea. You can just call on kids to help you out with each part of this section so that you understand that they're really getting it. And then I combine 6x minus 8x. I would call on a student to help me out with that. This is, um, it's like saying I have $6. I go in debt $8. I'm in debt $2. So negative 2x. Uh, 3 minus 1 gives me 2. 2 minus 2 gives me 0. So I end up, I don't combine these. These are blue circles and red squares. I don't combine those. They are not like terms. I end up with just negative 2x as my final answer. Maybe you ask your students to do the third one together. Maybe you ask them to um, identify like terms here. Um, this one has a y in it, right? We have a, another variable. So this might not be a great one where you just set them out to do it on their own. Maybe you want to walk them through this one again, right? And so um, you can fill the back of that paper with as many practice as you want. You can, um, this one brings in another variable. You could bring in exponents um, to talk about the difference between 6x and 6x squared and that those are not like terms and I would not combine them, right? So there's definitely another um, additional areas of this lesson that you're going to need to add depending on your grade level, but this is a great baseline to help you get started about how to understand how do I take concrete representational abstract and apply it to something in algebra, right? So maybe we do something like this, where we have some exponents. The key idea is that CRA is an effective instructional strategy for mathematics because it's kinesthetic, that's the concrete stage, and visual, that's representational, before it introduces the abstract version. And I put a little plus there. Plus, it keeps math anxiety low. When we have introduced this idea by talking about Starburst and Hershey Kisses and M&Ms, all of a sudden, our kids who really do have intense math anxiety, it feels like, oh, OK, I can do this. Oh, and then we're slowly getting to this abstract stage that really heightens my math anxiety, that really freaks me out. It's not a problem because we've been doing such a great job of leading into it and getting into it really slowly with the concrete and the representational stage. So I hope that this really helped you to think about how you can be using concrete representational or concrete pictorial abstract in your secondary math classroom as well. Make sure to grab the handout and I'll see you soon.